The rugged terrain of the Ohio Valley is the last place one would suspect a tornado to occur. But the people living along the Mahoning and Shenango Rivers on May 31st, 1985 will tell you that Mother Nature has no boundaries. On that day, a low pressure system was rushed in by the jet stream toward the northeast, bringing unusually hot and humid conditions to the region. It had shifted in front of a fast moving cold front with powerful gusts of winds. Severe weather was expected around midday, but the sun remained clear over most of the area. Just before 3 p.m., however, the lid shifted and a meteorological explosion transpired in the skies. The clouds darkened, the temperatures plummeted, sheer winds cut across the landscape. By evening, several tornadoes had touched down in Ontario, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, but the worst was still to come. At approximately 6.30 p.m., a funnel cloud began to drop from the skies near the Ravana Arsenal in Portage County, Ohio. The stovepipe-shaped tornado churned up the forest as it made impact, heading due east. Its winds rapidly began to pick up speed upon crossing into Trumbull County, carving a path toward Newton Falls. Standing upon City Hall, Police Reserve volunteer Clayton Reeks spotted the tornado spinning toward his community. With only seconds to spare, Reeks sounded the siren before making to safety. The twister ripped through the northern half of the city, blowing out the windows in City Hall. Across the street, some 150 bingo players within the American Legion took cover as the tornado severely wrecked the high school and flattened a bowling alley, along with sweeping several blocks of houses away. Miraculously, no in the city was killed, but the tornado was just getting started. The tornado quickened to a 50 mile per hour rush, sideswipe in the rail yard north of Lordstown. By 6.50, it aimed its sights upon the city of Niles. With winds near and freighter miles per hour, the tornado tore apart a fuel tank yard, sending propane tanks weighing 75,000 pounds each hurtling across the street like cardboard. Its freighter foot wide path carved through several blocks of homes, leveling many upon Lantern Lane. The tornado then nudged north through the business district, raising the Niles Park Plaza. A steel beam was twisted around the body of one unfortunate woman. Another was dismembered. The tornado then ripped across US 442, where cars were pancake on top of one another. Sam Cavelli and his father were driving west on the highway, had their car blown six blocks away into a field. Two motorists, however, were less lucky and lost their lives. The tornado crashed through a retirement complex before exiting the city limits. Nine people were killed in Niles. The tornado neared the northern half of Hubbard, where scores of homes had their roofs torn apart and walls caved in. One house was reportedly tossed some 15 yards from its foundation. At around 7 p.m., it shifted north, cutting across the state line into Mercer County. The tornado reached peak strength as it annihilated the entirety of Wheatland PA's industries. Steel girders from the Wheatland Sheet and Tube were contorted like pretzels. Asphalt from parking lots was scoured. The historic three-story Hotel Shenango disappeared. Some 20 vintage vehicles, each prized at $100,000, were thrown around when the maintenance garage they were concealed in collapsed. The tornado neared the community ballpark where a youth baseball game was occurring. Children and parents rushed for shelter as the twister came down. Davis Kostick, umpire for the game, grabbed his niece and another child and shielded them in a drainage ditch. The winds proved too powerful, however, and Kostick was pulled into the air. Part of Wheatland's residential area was left looking like a bomb had gone off. Eight people were killed. The twister shifted slightly east, cutting through some 70 homes near Hermitage. Here, the local airport got caught in the tornado's path, being torn apart as four planes had their wings sheared off. One wing ended up 10 miles away. The storm then veered into the countryside, moving swiftly toward the city of Mercer. It shattered a radio station, contorting its antenna into a pile of metal spaghetti. But before any further damage could ensue, the tornado finally dissipated at 710. For its 40-minute lifespan, the twister had carved a 47-mile-long path of annihilation for two states. Homes, churches, businesses, entire lifestyles were left shredded. Over 300 were reported injured, and 18 people were dead. The National Weather Service would give this particular tornado the ultimate rating, an F5. The first and only F5 to strike Pennsylvania. The deadliest tornado to strike Ohio since 1974. It is estimated winds peaked at 318 miles per hour, making this tornado the most powerful of the year and one of the most destructive in history. 
but the F5 was but one of 44 twisters that touched down in Canada and the United States that fateful evening. One F4 wiped the Amish village of Atlantic PA clean off the map. An F2 rip apart a campground near Pymatuming Lake and what meteorologist Thomas Grizzulis described as one of the most impressive tornadic events of the 20th century, an F4 mowed down 90,000 trees of Most Shanning State Forest on a 69 mile path of destruction. The May 31st, 1985 outbreak affected Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and the Providence in Ontario, claiming the lives of 90 and injuring a thousand more in an eight-hour period that remains one of the worst outbreaks in history.